my allotment. Today I'm going to be doing my March tour to show you what my allotment's doing at the moment and what I'm doing. So if you've not already subscribed to my channel, if you could please do so, because you'll get lots of helpful hints and tips all throughout the year from my home garden, my allotment, and also my home kitchen. So as you can see, the artichokes are growing rapidly and looking really, really healthy. So we've put some um, manure around them to give them a really good boost. So I'm hoping to try and keep the weeds down. So we've got the rhubarb over here and the stems are looking really good. I mean, if I really wanted to, I could put a few, I reckon, but I'm gonna leave them for a bit longer. I've still got a few bits in the freezer that I need to use up from last year. I found, I found a great big bag of gooseberries the other day, so I'll be eating those before I start eating anything else. But that won't be long at all. We've pruned all of our fruit trees and bushes. So as we move down, now we've done all that. There's still a little bit of tidying up to do. We've got quite a bit of wood that we've used for various things, which actually I think is getting a bit rotten now, so we need to get rid of it. And we'll probably put a bit more um, March, uh, mulch bark down. We're quite lucky we get it delivered for free at our allotment. Um, it just basically keeps the weeds down, so I don't have to work quite so hard. So the gooseberries, we have put cardboard all in and around that to try and make it a bit of a no-dig system and also covered it with some manure to mulch it. We still need to sort out the strawberries. These need to go somewhere else because these, these pots are just not working very well and the weeds are coming through and by the time I get to the season, it's more, you know, when they're fruiting, there's more um, weeds in there than there are strawberries. So we're going to have to lift those out really soon and get them moved on. So if you want to plant some strawberries or want to move your strawberries, you know, now's the time to be doing it. It's kind of almost maybe a bit last minute.com to be moving them, but I'm going to be moving mine. And the garlic's doing it beautifully. So keeping that weed free. So I recently raked around that. It's really important that you keep the weeds down because otherwise um, they won't grow very well. So my kale, I've still got that in at the moment, but probably over the next couple of weeks, I'll take it out. I'm a, I'm a great believer, I never whip stuff out until I'm gonna do something else with it, not when I can still keep picking it off. But the reality is, is that's gonna have to be cleared quite soon for me to get other things planted in there. But I'm leaving it in there till last knockings before I do dig that out because I've got a nice big container full in my fridge that I'm gradually munching through. And there's at least probably another two or three servings, but it will start to bolt soon. So it won't last for much longer. And if yours has bolted already, then you might as well dig it out. Mine hasn't, so it's still in there. But now it's starting to warm up, it will do. That's just the way it works. So as we move down, I had chard here, which I've dug out, I've raked it over, and I've just started plant planting my onion sets. So the onions I'm planting today are Stuttgarter and Centurion. I have got some Red Baron at home, but I'll be planting those in a few weeks' time. Often red onions fare much better if you give them a few more weeks before you put them in. So I've already started putting some of them in. Yeah, basically I dug it over, I raked it over to keep it quite level and then you put them in the ground. Now just very quickly, I have got a video on this, but just very quickly, the way you plant them, it's about 20 centimetres apart and about 30 centimetres in between the rows. Now a dibber is essential kit in my book for planting these and you push the dibber into the ground, you want your onion to go just on the surface. So as you can see, that's kind of like on the surface of the soil. So you push it down as far as the surface. I see some people having them right on the top. I don't know why people plant them like that, but in, I've never done them like that. And the instructions don't say to do them like that either. So you literally plant, drop them into the ground. So the little, you've got the top of it where it comes up to a point. Now that goes at the top and then you've got the root at the bottom. I know that sounds a little bit obvious, but some people are not sure, so I'd rather be over explanatory and then you know exactly what you're doing. So that bit goes straight in and you literally just push it down. You don't backfill it, you don't water it this time of year. Although you will water them when it becomes dry in the summer, this time of year, you just pop them in the ground and you let nature take its course. It's very similar to planting the other kinds of bulbs. You don't, you don't need to water these kinds of things in. It's perfectly wet enough at the moment. So yeah, it's so just really quick, really easy. And if you use a dibber, it really does make light work of it. Um, and you can get them done. The hardest thing is digging it all over and raking it. This is, this is the easy peasy bit. Um, 
I've definitely got my exercise today, that's for sure. You don't know it needs to go to the gym when you've got an allotment, I can tell you. So that's my last one, I might as well get that in. Bit of a straggly one, that one, but it might as well go in the ground, it's not gonna do anything else, is it? So as we move over, these, so these are my main crop onions, and these will be probably come to fruition, I'll start lifting them in about July. Um, these ones just next to it are my overwintering onions. So they're coming along quite nicely. They'll actually be ready to harvest not that much earlier than the other ones. And these ones don't keep as well, so you have to, you have to eat these a lot quicker. Whereas the main crop ones I've just planted, when you harvest those, if you dry them correctly, they will last for quite a long time throughout the winter. I'm still eating my onions from my main crop onions at the moment, so they really do keep incredibly well. So I've just got a few straggly beetroots and radishes in there, which, to be honest, there's not an awful lot there. I do need to dig that up. This bit I've already dug over, and I'll have my, my potatoes and most of my root vegetables will go in this area. So I've still got my cake gooseberries covered. Um, I don't know whether they're gonna grow back. This is a bit of a trial. I think I said I got them last year. They went a little bit too late and I didn't get many cake gooseberries over it uh, from them. And someone said that if you, um, cut them off at the bottom and cover them that they might sprout back in the spring and I thought you know what why not I must give it a go there's nothing else in there is there so as we move over we dug our dahlias up and they're stored so they don't frost off and affect them and um, we've got some chard and some more beetroot that's been really eaten by the pigeons and a few um, turnips so I'm going to be digging this last little bit up I lifted this up actually when I first got here and I'm really quite chuffed because my savoy cabbages underneath here are doing brilliantly and I'm so glad I covered them because if I didn't and I might have had the same fate as these with the pigeons so if we lift this up and we'll have a look I've actually got one if I wanted to I could look it's got quite a good heart on it already I could if I wanted to take that one I won't I'm going to leave it a couple more weeks but as you can see although the snails have had a little bit of a go on the outer leaves they're pretty much leaving the hearts alone so I'll let them with let them do that I don't want to put anything down unless I have to to stop them um, I think I've said before I often use chili pepper and um, derricaceous earth um, which um, I hope I've pronounced that correctly but we will put it in the description if you've never used it before um, and and that's something that we use to keep the slugs at bay. But quite often, if I can, if I don't have to, I don't, I don't put anything down. If it's not, it's not really affecting the crop that badly, then I'm not going to put anything down to stop the slugs from attacking it. They can have a little bit as long as they don't eat the hearts. So as we move up, I've dug all my beetroots and a few other bits out. I've got a little bit of parsnip, which once I finish the parsnips I dug the other day, I'll dig that up and I'll. Um, I'll eat those, so this bit's pretty much dug up. This bit is covered, ready, and I'll probably have, I'll have courgettes and beans on this bottom water, and on this bit it'll be mainly brassicas, but I'll probably have a little bit of room and I'll be able to fit something else in. Something quite exciting that we've done is we've finally cut the, um, the big drum that we had in half, and we're making a little pond um, for the wildlife, so. It's very rudimentary but actually we've got a pond at home and we bought like a really like fancy plastic liner but when you looked at it it was only it wasn't anything you know it was just plastic so we kind of thought we'd do something with that would upcycle so my husband got hold of a great big plastic drum he's cut it in half um, and we're in the process of, of finishing that off so hopefully when you see the next video um there'll be some water in it and a little bit of wildlife maybe but our pond at home literally the day we put it in the next day we already had wildlife in the pond there was, there was already a frog in there we couldn't believe it so we just put this on there because we don't want anything falling in them and i suspect that we'll either leave this on there or we'll, we'll put something else on there just just as a safety precaution because we, we don't want any anyone to walk into it and injure themselves so as we move up black currants are starting to bud really beautifully so we're going to do what we did with the gooseberries and we're going to put some um some cardboard around them and then we'll probably mulch around these as well but we've not got around to it yet but these are starting to look really really lovely so i'm going to make sure that i cover these this year because last year i didn't cover them in time and the birds probably ate more than i did which was a little bit frustrating but it happens to everybody 
um, from time to time. So that's, I'm gonna try and make sure that I do get that covered. So I hope that you've enjoyed the tour of the allotment today. Um, I'd love to know what you're doing and if you've got any questions, um, please put them in the comments.